Let's talk about some words that you should probably forget, and I'll tell you what you should say instead. What's up, everyone? My name is Wes. This is Interactive English, which is all about helping you practice and improve your English skills. So quite often we get asked, hey, uh, should I use this word or phrase? What's more common? Is this word frequently used? This is a question that we get regularly. So in today's lesson, I want to talk about some words that are not commonly used in English. And some of you, you probably haven't even heard of before. And I want to tell you the words that you should use instead, but also I want to show you some resources that you can use that will help you answer that question. If you're wondering which phrase or word is more commonly used, these resources will help. Also, as a disclaimer, I'm from the United States, so I'll be giving you the American perspective when it comes to the usage of these words. Let's start with something that, that's easy and straightforward, and that is thou, thee, and thine. So if you haven't heard of these words, then, then that's there's a good reason for that. It's because these are archaic and very old forms of the word you. The word thou is used as the subject, thee would be the object, and thine would be the possessive form. So for example, I could say, thou needs to forget about these words. I told thee to stop using these. And thine, I, I guess I could ask you, what is thine name? Let me know in the comments, write your name, say hello, I just want to hear from you. So as you can tell, it, it just sounds really awkward. You're not going to hear these words out on the street in everyday spoken English. You may hear them if you are listening to a play, and it's a very old play, and they're using this as part of the dialogue. Or you could read about these words in a story, if it's an old story, and they're using this archaic form of you. The next word that you can eliminate from your vocabulary vocabulary is hither. And what hither means is to go towards someplace. And when I think of it being used, I, I always think of the phrase and somebody saying, come hither come hither. They're telling somebody to come to them. Nowadays, you're not going to tell somebody to come hither. You, I guess you could ask them and say, hey, could you please come over here? Or, or tell them, I, I'd like to ask you something. Or again, if you're talking about somebody you might be attracted to and you want to start a conversation with them, instead of telling them to come to you, I think it's actually better for you to go to that person and introduce yourself. So the first resource that I want to show you is that just doing a Google search for the word. And if we type in the word hither plus meaning, well, then it's going to bring up the definition of the word. But if we move down to here where it says translations, word origin and more definitions and click on that arrow and then move down to the bottom and you can see the use over time for this word. And hither has declined dramatically in the last 200 years. We can do the same with thou if we want to see its usage. And if we scroll down, you can see that it has also declined a lot. Are you ready for more words? Then we have salutations. So this is a word that I, you, you may not have heard somebody say in spoken English, it's not very common, but you may read it in a story. And what it means is, well, it's just a greeting. It's a fancy way of greeting somebody and just saying hello, salutations. When I think of this word, I think of the story Charlotte's Web, because the two main characters, Charlotte the spider and Wilbur the pig, this is what she says to Wilbur when they first meet. Charlotte says, salutations. And even Wilbur, who's a pig, said, Charlotte, what the hell are you talking about? What does that word mean? And she had to explain to Wilbur that it is a fancy greeting, a way of saying hello. So when you meet somebody, instead of saying salutations, just say, hi, hello, nice to meet you. There are so many different ways to greet somebody and you, you don't need to use salutations. Then there's frolic. And what this word means is just to play in a lively and cheerful way, a very carefree way. I often think it's more appropriate when describing children, they're, they're frolicking on the beach or out in the field or on the playground. They're just playing in a lively manner. Now, this is another word that I think you're more likely to read in a book than you would hear being spoken on the street. However, it is a word that hasn't completely disappeared. You will hear people say this from time to time. You may hear it in a movie or a TV show, but I think its usage has declined significantly in the last hundred years. 
Another useful resource is wordandphrase.info. So we can just go to the frequency list and put in the word frolic, and it tells us how often this word is used in different styles of writing, as well as in spoken English, because they use transcripts as well as interviews. And as you can see, it is a word that you will more likely read than, than hear in spoken English. And I always think it's good to check and see what the trend is like as well, so we can go down here and see that frolic is on the decline. We can also look up salutation, and it is a word that you are much more likely to read than hear because it's not that common in spoken English. Another cool little feature about this site is that if we go down here, it will actually show you how the word is used in context. We can also check out the trend, and you can see that salutation is becoming less and less common. Here are a couple more words for you. Then we have whippersnapper. Now, this may be a word that you've never heard of before, and yeah, it, it's just not commonly used, but a whippersnapper is a person, and it's talking about a young person who is maybe a bit arrogant, overconfident, presumptuous, and an older person might refer to them as a whippersnapper. And they'd often use it with the word young and say that, ah, oh, this person is just a young whippersnapper. They don't know what they're talking about, these young whippersnappers. Finally, and I, I'm gonna to catch a lot of heat for this word, but I'm going to put it on the list anyway, and that is so-so. Now, this is a word that's actually become more popular over the years, but the reason that I'm putting it on there is because English learners tend to overuse the word so-so. I imagine that most of you know what it means. It just means that, that something is okay, that you really don't have a positive or negative feeling one way or the other. Things are just so-so. Now, the reason I say that English learners tend to overuse it is because I often hear them use it to describe themselves, to describe their feeling. Like, oh, you know, how are you doing? And they'd say, well, you know, I'm so-so. In this case, I think it's more common for somebody to say, you know, I'm okay, I'm good, I'm not bad, if you don't really want to convey a really positive or negative feeling. You wouldn't really say that that inside you're feeling so-so. It sounds a little awkward. You may use this word if you're describing Describing the way you feel about something else. So for example, maybe I, I were to ask you, you know, what did you think of the movie? And you didn't really love it. You didn't really hate it. You could say, yeah, you know, the movie, well, you know, it's just so-so. So keep that in mind. If you're going to use this word, try to use it when you're describing something else like a meal or an event and you don't have a good feeling about it or a bad feeling. You're just going to say, well, you know, it was so-so. But still, I'm going to keep it up there and, and try to discourage you a little bit from using so-so because it's not a it's not a descriptive word. I always encourage learners to try to be more descriptive when they want to convey their feelings and so-so yeah, it just it just doesn't give a lot of lot of information. And personally, I feel when somebody says it to me, I, I get the feeling like, okay, this person just they just don't want to talk to me about this thing. They don't want to describe the way they feel about it. So, okay, we won't talk about it. And that's probably not what you want to do. You want to practice your speaking skills and find ways to engage in conversation, not shut it down. So try to use a more descriptive word than so-so. Finally, and I've saved the best for last, is Google's Ngram Viewer. Now, Ngram Viewer tracks the frequency of words and phrases in books over the last 200 years. And the best thing about this resource is that you can type in more than one word or phrase and see how they compare with each other. So let's take a look at whippersnapper. Now, as you can see, it really took off in the first half of the 1900s, but then it went down significantly before leveling off. And as for so-so, it has been on a steady climb these past 200 years. And I know you're looking at so-so thinking, okay, I can't wait to go out and use this, but still, I would encourage you to use more descriptive words. And we can also compare so-so and whippersnapper. And when you put both of them in there, you can kind of get an idea how much more commonly used one word is over the other. So I hope you learned something today about those words, and I hope you can use those resources to help you better understand which words and phrases are commonly used in English. If you enjoyed this lesson, then I want you to hit the like button and write the word frolic in the comments. It's lively, it's fun, it's carefree. If you thought the lesson was okay, I want you to hit the like button and write 
so-so, all right? It's just, you know, that's the way you felt about it. Wasn't good, wasn't bad. If you didn't really care for the lesson, I want you to hit the like button and write the word whippersnapper in the comments because then, yes, I'm just a young whippersnapper, a bit presumptuous, telling you which words you can no longer use in English. Either way, write to me in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.